It is really easy to make a grouped frequency distribution in either Excel or Google Sheets. Our steps are going to be exactly the same. So I've got a set of data here, and I want to construct four classes. My very first step is to figure out that class width. That's going to be the range of my data divided by four. So I'm going to go ahead and take a formula here. So in an empty cell, I type equals parenthesis. I want max minus min divided by four. So I'm going to type in max parenthesis, and then I'm going to click, hold, and drag through my data. Parenthesis minus my min. So min parenthesis do the same thing. I'm going to click, hold, and drag through my data. Parenthesis to close the min, parenthesis to close the numerator, and then I want divided by four and enter. Now I get a 61, but I need to round this up so that my classes include all of the data. So I'm going to round that up to a 62. Now we can use this to build our class limits. To get the first lower class limit, I need the minimum value. Let's go ahead and have my spreadsheet figure this one out. So I'm going to go equals min parenthesis and click through my data and then hit enter it's 53. I'm going to use this as my initial lower class limit, so 53. The class width gets me from lower class limit to the next lower class limit. So I'm going to be adding 62 down through this first column. To do the next lower limit then, I'm going to do equals. I'm going to grab the row above by clicking on it and then plus 62 and then enter. I want to drag this calculation through the column. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to grab the lower corner so I get that plus sign and then click, hold and drag throughout that column. These are my lower class limits. Now my upper class limits are going to go up to but not including these limits. So I want 53 to 114. So the next one starts at 115. So I can go ahead and start with that first one. So this is going to be 114 because it's one less than the next limit. Now the class width is also going to move me through these upper limits. So when I go to the next cell, I'm going to go equals and then click on the cell above, and I want to go plus my class width of 62. And we're going to drag these through my column. So I'm going to grab that lower corner, click, drag, and hold through the column. There are the class limits. Now I'm going to move on to the class boundaries. The class boundaries do touch. To achieve that, I'm going to do a plus or minus 0.5 continuity adjustment. I'm just going to take each of my lower limits, subtract 0.5, each of my upper limits and add 0.5 to get my boundaries. Um, my spreadsheet will do a really great job of this. So I'm going to grab that first lower boundary, um, type equals. I'm going to grab the class limit and then do minus 0.5 and then enter. And it suggested an autofill. Take a look. That is 0.5 less than each of my lower limits. Yes, I want that. I'm going to go ahead and click on the checkbox there. Now I'm going to do my upper class boundaries. I'm going to type equals grab that first upper limit and then add 0.5. Enter. Again, it suggests an autofill, which looks correct. Next are my frequencies. To get my frequencies, I can use either the class limits or the class boundaries. I want all of the data values in between. We're going to use the class boundaries because it's just a tiny bit simpler to type a formula. So I want to go equals, and I'm going to do a conditional count. So I'm going to go count ifs. I have two conditions. One is going to be greater than the lower boundary. The other one is less than the upper boundary. So count ifs. I want my data. So I'm going to click through my data. So my data, comma, I want it to be greater than. So quotation marks, greater than. And then and, I want it to be greater than my 52.5, comma. Now comes my second condition. So again, my data comma, and this time I want less than, so quotation marks, less than, quotation marks, and, and then I want my upper boundary. Enter, and I end up with five. Now I could click and drag this through, but as it's adjusting my formula, it's going to change my data set. So instead I want to make one more change to my formula. Double click on this. I'm okay with keeping columns A through D. A through D works, but I don't want to mess with these rows. So I want the rows to stay three through nine. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of anything that I want fixed. So I want fixed the three and the nine and I want these fixed as well. As I click 
through my column, I'm going to end up with the correct frequencies. To check that I've got the right frequencies, I need these frequencies to add up to the total number of data values. I'm going to use a count function, just straightforward count. So equals count parenthesis. I'm just going to click through our data and then hit enter and I end up with 28. Let's also ask the spreadsheet to sum this column and it's guessing J3 through J6. That's perfect. I'm going to hit enter to select that and I do get 28, so those match. Next is the cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency is a running total. So for the first class, the cumulative frequency, so up to a data value of 114, I do have five. But for the next one, which is going to be up to a data value of 176, I'm going to have 5 plus 14. So I'm going to type in equals the cell above plus the frequency next to it and then hit enter. Now it's suggesting an autofill here and I don't want that autofill. So let me go ahead and get rid of this one. But I do want my autofill to go ahead and move through these values. I do get that final cumulative frequency of 28, which says that all of the data values up through 300 account for 28 or all of my data values. Next is the frequency as a percentage. The frequency as a percentage is the frequencies divided by the total. So I'm going to go equals frequency, and I'm just going to type in divided by 28 so I can make this a running total. If yours didn't show up as a percentage and it instead showed up as a decimal, you can click on the format as a percentage and then change the decimal values as you want. Now I'm going to grab this lower corner and drag it through. If I do a sum here, I should end up with 100%. All of the values should be accounted for. So I'm going to go ahead and add up these frequencies, and I do get 100%. If you rounded, you'll just be close to 100%. Last but not least are the midpoints. This is the middle most value for each of my classes. It doesn't matter if you use class limits or class boundaries. The middle most value is the same. So I'm looking for the average value. So to compute these, I want to go equals parenthesis. I'm going to do lower limit plus upper limit parenthesis divided by two and then enter. And it's suggesting an autofill. I don't want all of those. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and drag this through. Now that we've got our group frequency distribution finished, we might actually need to do some computations with it, like a weighted mean. Go ahead and take a look at my next video here. Thank you so much for watching.